Hey everybody, welcome back to White Mountain Approves. My name is Ken and coming to you tonight is Ian, Keith and Dave. And we're so glad that you've taken the time to tune into this broadcast. We talk about everything relating to hiking, especially in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. And so we talk about gear reviews, we break down mountains and trails, and then we talk about sometimes some random things that happen. And so we had a really cool experience just happen this past week, February 15th. Um, I was invited by Lieutenant James Nealon of New Hampshire Fish and Game to join all the officers that work with search and rescue on uh, Mount uh, Cardigan to do an all day training exercise. And I reached out to Keith. And so Keith went with me because it was uh, a, a Tuesday during the week and Dave and Ian were both I had to work that day. And so, um, yeah, we had a great, great hike. Keith, why don't you share a little bit about what, what you thought about how it began and when we took off and going up fire screw and. Yeah, it was uh, quite an experience. I'm really glad I got a chance to go along. When we got into the parking lot. There was about a dozen or so of the fish and game fellows there. And it ended up being a total of 15 of them that went with us. And uh, we hiked up uh, the Manning Trail up to, to the summit of Fire School. About three quarters of the way up, they stopped on the side of a ledge up there. And they, they did an avalanche rescue practice. Now, these guys had packs on their back. They weighed anywhere from 50 to 70 pounds. They had to have everything with them that they would need if it were a live rescue. It means all their, uh, their gear as far as survival, as far as first aid, as far as anything a patient may need, like extra sleeping bags. I mean, it was, it was surprising the weight these guys carried with them. But um, we were there about, what, 45 minutes, PK, yeah. watching this? Um, why don't you share about what you saw on some of that? Yeah, it was really awesome. You know, these are just such a great group of dedicated uh, men. And um, like uh, Keith was saying, they carry everything. They carry avalanche shovels. They carry their long 12-foot probes to go down through the snow to try to recover a body. They had all their beacon equipment, uh, transmitters and receivers. They, uh, they actually were going to do all day training and then hike down to high cabin and spend the night. So not, in, not only did they have all their hiking gear and all of their rescue gear, but then they had all of their stoves and food and sleeping systems and all of that. So they had really heavy packs. I know I grabbed one of the guy's packs and just like lifted it up a little bit and it was way more weight than I would ever, ever want to hike with. Um, so we were on fire screw, like Keith said, for quite a while where they were going through different exercises and instructions. And then we were clowning around with some of them, you know, uh, on, on, the, on the side and a great group of guys, great sense of humor. And then um, the wind, the wind was picking up a little bit. And so Keith and I, you know, I have a digital thermometer and Keith has got a wind chill graph and we kind of put our heads together and figured that it was probably about seven below zero on fire screw at that time. And uh, it was getting a little cold just standing around there for 45 minutes straight. So um, we decided, uh, they told us that they were probably going to be wrapping up in like 10 or 15 minutes. So I told Keith, I said, why don't we, why don't we bust out of here and head towards the summit, but take our time. That way we're not going to build up huge sweat. We'll just really, you know, turtle our way over the summit and they can catch up with us. So Keith, why don't you talk a little bit about heading up to the summit and what we experienced when we got up there? Yeah, we got up on the top of fire screw, and the fire screw over to Cardigan is a long ridge walk, you know, subtle up and downs. And this, there's a lot of skiing activity up in that area, and I think they kind of made their own trail. So we kind of meandered around a bit and eventually ended up over by the, the summit going to Cardigan. The bad part about this is somebody went up in there when it was soft and there was a lot of potholes where people post hole through and, and the snow covered them and you couldn't see them. So we were stepping in them periodically, really worried about twisting an ankle on that. But I guess that was the worst. And the wind at that point, when we started going across that ridge, was really picking up. And so we made our way up to the summit of Cardigan where the tower was and you know, almost couldn't stand up. And fortunately, the base of the tower is kind of boxed in, and we were able to get shelter ourselves in the wind while we waited for those guys. It's probably, what, 15, 20 minutes for the rest of them showed up up there on that? Yeah. yeah. And they guessed that the uh, 
field efficiency game guys that they thought the wind was probably steady about 30, could gust up to about 40. Based on that, we were now seeing wind chills anywhere from minus 12 to minus 15. It was cold. It was cold. What do you think on that, PK? Yeah, it was cold and it was blustery. That wind has a way of cutting right through you. And I know, you know, we waited. It was really cool because, you know, they're all wearing bright orange uh, jackets, reddish orange jackets. And uh, being up on top of Cardigan and you get this perfect panoramic of the whole top of fire screw. And we could see them working through the, the brush, you know, because there's some, some, uh, some trees up there, some smaller trees up there. And, uh, and they were kind of scattered up in little groups and everything. So finally, by the time they got to the summit, all 15 of them, I just kind of looked at them and I said, gee, you guys were so late. I was getting ready to call search and rescue. <laughs> so <laughs> we clowned around back and forth with them and, you know, had a great time. And then, um, you know, Keith and I really at that point didn't want to wait around for whatever other, pr they were supposed to do some uh, cramp on trainings on the cliffs and some rappelling on, uh, on the cliffs. And, um, you know, we weren't going to stand around and watch that. It was bad enough on fire screw, but on top of cardigan, it was really ripping. And so uh, we wanted to get a group picture. So we got them all in a group. And um, I took my gloves off to take a bunch of pictures. And while I did that, one of them left the group, came and got some other clothing on, went back into the group, was fidgeting. And when they all finally got all into there, you know, some of them were kneeling, some of them were standing. I took like five shots and put my gloves on because my hand, especially my left hand and my thumb were like gone. They were just frozen solid, but I had a good pair of mittens and I had a big oversized hand warmer in there. I knew it would warm up, uh, but it did actually, it didn't warm up until we went all the way down the dome by high cabin and started getting in the wind into the trees. And as soon, I mean, we weren't five minutes into the trees and all of that wind was gone. And you could feel the difference in the temperature. Uh, it was just, you know, it was really nice. So it was a great afternoon with those guys. And um, again, you know, I, 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 I salute their efforts and what they do. Um, it, sometimes it's a, it's a thankless job. Uh, we, we did hear some stories. I'll be writing some of these stories in my third book when that comes out. But before we sign off, um, I do want to put a plug out there for the hike safe cards that the Fish and Game uh, offers. And so I don't know if you know how it works, but if you are a hunter or a fisherman and you buy a license, that license automatically gives you an insurance in case you ever need to be rescued. But if you are a kayaker or canoer or cross-country skier or a hiker and you get in trouble, if they find that it was negligence, you'll be fined. You'll be, you'll, you know, you'll have to pay the cost of that rescue. And believe me, it's not cheap. So for $25 for an individual or $35 for a family, you can buy a hike safe card and you're going to support fish and game through that especially the search and rescue team. But if anything happens to you, um, you, you know, those rescues uh, will be covered because you bought that card. So you can get that by going online to New Hampshire Fish and Game. And there's a, a, a window there that will say hike safe cards and you can pull it down there and register and get a card. So it's, it's a great thing. Um, and I, especially if you're a new hiker, um, if you have health issues or anything like that, you know, I strongly recommend you get a hike safe card. It's, it, it's, it's an insurance policy for you should you ever need a, a rescue. So having said that, um, Keith, or actually one. Dave and Ian, do you guys got any uh, last words to say? Uh, yeah, one interjection on that. If you uh, register an off-road vehicle too, you're also covered. Snowmobile, four-wheeler, side-by-side, you're also covered for the same benefits of the hike safeguard. Right, good. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. <clears throat> Keith, you were saying something too? Yeah, I would just... I, uh, go ahead, Keith. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, I really learned a new appreciation for these guys. I mean, most of the time you only see them out checking licenses or writing tickets and, you know, getting a lot of grief. But you know what? These guys really need a shout out because I really appreciate the effort they go through to stay trained. So if you do get in trouble, they can come and get you and get you to safety. And you just, you know, you just can't appreciate them enough for that. And I'm glad we have them there. So, Dave? Yeah, I, I, Keith, that's a great point. Uh, those men and women train hard, and they have to be at ready all year long. So that, that's a that's a great point. And I'd also mention that even if you don't, you know, obviously you're not going to get a hike safe card planning on getting or needing to be rescued. So it's really a great donation to uh, to to, to the, a great cause. Uh, and PK, just one one more thing there. Um, is it true you were buttering them up for your own rescue at some point? 
You know, I mean, you guys know me. I do try to cover all my bases. I think the conversation happened because as we were hiking, sometimes a couple of them would pass us and then we'd stop. You know how it works. You stop and you, you know, you, you uh, hydrate or whatever. And I, I overheard like a group of four or five of them muttering under their breath, like, I think that's Ken Bossy. Like he's a mountain man legend in New Hampshire. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we got talking around that kind of topic. <laughs> I got awesome. one thing to say about that. Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But no, uh, again, you know, in closing, uh, it was a gr they're a great group of uh, individuals and uh, they do a lot of work and man, they train hard. So, you know, that, should you ever need their services, um, they are the best trained, um, you know, definitely in the state and um, all the search and rescue teams. Uh, hats off to all of you men and women. We're really thankful that you're there. Okay, so until our next broadcast, folks, we'll see you then and stay safe. Take care. See ya.